What's up guys, J.R. Raymond back again coming to you from my couch because this is a topic that just kind of got thrown at me that I decided was a pretty good idea to come out and talk about since there are still an awful lot of people out there who do, don't quite understand other than the avid bowlers. So today we're going to talk a little bit about bowling balls and why we need so many of them. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, welcome back. So the big topic for the day is actually why, why do you need so many bowling balls? You always you, you see those people, they walk in, they've got six or nine or 12 or 15 or 18 bowling balls, and they walk into a bowling center with that many bowling balls, and you always get stopped by somebody, and they always say, boy, you got an awful lot of bowling balls. Do you really need that many? Um, and, and you always just kind of smile, and you're like, yeah, it's, uh, and you try not to explain it too much because it would take a long time, and you're not sure they would understand it anyway. So you always just say, yeah, they always, you know, I got a bunch that do a different thing. And they just kind of give you that look like, do a different thing. It's a round ball. What are you talking about? You know, so it, it's just, it's confusing for some people. They don't get it. Uh, and then it's, a, I always like to use the variable, or I like to use the, you know, the comparison to like golf, you know, I'll, com I'll compare golf a lot to bowling. Um, but you don't walk onto a golf course with just one or two clubs. You know, you're not going to go out there with a seven iron unless you're tin cup and play the entire course. Like it just, it doesn't, doesn't happen. It can't happen. If you want to be successful, you can't do that. So you're not going to walk into a bowling center with just one bowling ball. Most times now you can get away with it in league. Uh, if you just bowl in a place, I mean, you bowl one time a week and you go there, you know, uh, that's the only place you bowl. So you know the characteristics, you know what's going to happen, you know what that one ball does, and that ball works for you. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. Now, the difference comes in is if you like to leave town and go and bowl tournaments, or if you go bowl PBA events, or even big amateur events, uh, if you try to go in there with just one bowling ball, most times, it's not going to go too well for you because you're trying to compete with people who have multiple bowling balls, who have the ability to changing bowling balls at any time to give them a ball reaction that they want. Now, when we say ball reaction, that's another thing that comes into play is they always say, well, what is that? Well, ball reaction, I guess, it, to put it simply, is just uh, the way that your ball curves as it goes down the lane or the way that it hooks because I know I catch flack from people all the time because I call it curving, whatever. Um, but... It's the way, the shape that the ball makes as it curves or hooks down the lane. Um, and some do different things than others. Uh, inside those bowling balls, there is a, what they call a core. Uh, and then there's a, an inner core uh, and an outer core or an uh, inner filler that wraps around the core. Uh, and then there's the cover stock that wraps around the inner filler. Um, all play a role in your ball reaction. That inner core is shaped, and it's a heavy piece that isn't put inside a bowling ball. It's shaped to give you uh, a little bit of, uh, to take the stability out of a roll. So if you just take a normal bowling ball that is symmetric and has no difference at all, it's just a round ball and you roll it, uh, it's just going to roll and roll and roll and it's going to roll forward. But now you put a, an awkward shaped piece, a heavy piece of awkward core in it, and you roll it. Now that's going to start to tumble, and it's going to make your ball kind of. I guess you would like. I guess you'd say wobble a little bit. Uh, and if you place that core in specific directions based on how the bowler throws the ball, that core can make it wobble and make the bowling ball do something specific. So you can take two of the same bowling ball and lay them out completely different, two opposite ends of the spectrum, and you can watch these two bowling balls. Uh, be thrown and you would see two completely different ball reactions or two different curves on the lane. One may go straight and one may actually curve a whole lot. So um, we have to take this into consideration and and with there being so many different companies just like you know, just like golf has so many different um, golf club companies, Titleist and uh, Nike and Mizuno and they're just there's all kinds of different companies out there that make different clubs, it's the same thing in bowling. We have all kinds of different bowling ball companies. We've got Brunswick and Radical and Deviate and Storm and Ebonite International, uh, your Hammer, your Columbia 300, your Track, your Roto Grip, your 900 Global, your Motive, and it just goes on and on. There's even some, uh, some companies who aren't quite uh, as well uh, recognized, like your, uh, I don't know if Lane 1's still around, but I know Legends and 
uh, I guess it's the Swag Company now. They're still around. Uh, they're making stuff. They actually just sent us some bowling balls to do some reviews on. So stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing those. Uh, a couple of Swag bowling balls we're going to put holes in and we're going to do reviews on those as well. So you guys can see uh, what those ones are all about. But anyway, so there's just there's all kinds of different bowling ball companies who make different bowling balls and they all have different characteristics. Um, the cover stock being a really big one. How that cover stock or that outer shell of the bowling ball is made uh, and the firmness, the, the, the durometer of it, the, if you take a durometer to it, the softness or the hardness of that cover stock can determine an awful lot because those bowling balls create friction on the lane and the lane has oil on them. Um, so a harder cover stock bowling ball technically is going to slip down the lane or slide down the lane a little bit more than a softer cover stock durometer ball or I wouldn't even know how to say it. I know I know the tool is called a durometer, but I don't know what, what is it when you use a durometer on a ball? You durometerite it? <laughs> I don't know. So uh, call me stupid. I don't know. That's I don't know what it's called. But you're testing the hardness of the bowling ball. Um, so the softer bowling balls are going to dig in. It's almost like, uh, like think of like snow tires. Um, if you if you pump up a tire as much as you possibly can to make it as hard as possible, they're going to slip and they're not going to gain as much traction in the snow. But if you take some air out of those tires, now uh, more of that tire actually touches the snow and it starts to dig in a little bit. That softness creates a little bit more friction. So it's kind of like that. The softness of the bowling ball sees more friction on the lane. So the cover stocks mean a big deal to go along with the cores inside of the bowling balls. Uh, and then you've got a whole different person, a whole different. Uh, way of looking at it is when you when you're putting three holes in the ball now you're taking weight out of it in certain spots and you're you're making it uh you're sitting the core in there like we talked about with layouts you're making the core sit in specific spots to make the ball roll in certain ways so uh for those who just maybe don't understand why there's so many bowling balls or why people carry so many bowling balls it's because you've got to make different shots uh, it's just like going to a par three. You're going to use if it's 150 yards, you're going to use an eight iron. You know, you're not going to pull your driver out on a par three 150 yard shot. Uh, you're going to you need a different club. You know, so just like if you're on a short pattern, you're going to need uh, something like a urethane ball or a really strong ball that's going to roll early and smooth. Uh, and then if you're on a long pattern, you're going to need something that is. Um, a little bit cleaner cover stock with a different shape core to make it to be longer and stronger. You know, there's just different, different, different types of ways of going about it. So uh, for me, like this weekend, I just made a video about how I'm taking 12 balls plus a two ball, uh, like an emergency bag, in case the 12 that I have don't work. Those two are there for off the wall, you know, random bowling balls that I'm not sure will work. So. I'm taking technically 14 bowling balls with me to go bowl on a tournament, um, and f those 14 bowling balls are fairly similar. Like when I went out and I took those 18 balls out on the lanes, I took 18 balls out on the lanes to figure out which 12 or 14 I was going to take with me. They, when I when I went to grab them, I looked at them based on the cover stock and the core and the layout and everything that I had on them. These were the 18 that I thought had the best chance of being the best reaction. Now I got to narrow it down to 14 or so. It's just like with golf clubs. You could technically have 25 golf clubs, but um, there's only room for, you know, what I think the rule technically is 14, right? If, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 14 clubs that you're allowed to have in your bag when you're, when you're officially playing. Um, so, you know, you just kind of narrow it down a little bit. And plus, if you have too many, you get confused um, because you could have too many that fit in the same type of spot. Um, like there was a, I had a baller that I could have taken with me, but it would have, it would have fit where I would have had four or five balls in that spot, in that slot or that type of ball reaction that would have confused me a little bit. So I could have either used this ball or that ball and which one would be right. So if I just eliminate one, now I only have that choice. Now you can kind of just use your hand and manipulate it and, and roll it differently to make it do something different. So this was just, I know this is probably a little bit confusing for the beginner bowler, but just trust me on this. There's a reason why bowlers walk around with a lot of bowling balls. And it's not because they want to show off how much money they have and how many bowling balls they buy. Uh, they, it's because, you know, conditions are different everywhere. And from lane to lane, it's different. It's, I know they look the same, but from lane to lane, and from pair to pair, the lanes play completely different, and uh, you're going to need a different ball most times. So I hope this helps for those who don't quite understand why there's so many bowling balls out there. But uh, if it doesn't, 
I'm sorry. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a heads up. If it does, cool. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Um, but that's all I got for you. So I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. And uh, until we see you guys next time, I'm out. See ya.